And good morning once again, world. It is 10 a.m. UK time on Saturday, the 14th of October, 2023. And yes, there's going to be an eclipse today. And I'll look at that in a bit. Firstly, I want to thank uh, every one of my students who turned up at that weekend I did in South London last weekend. It was a fantastic show. I've been burnt out ever since, but all of the videos were recorded and um, I have now sent them off. I'm sending off the final ones as I speak. So everyone who attended should be able to get all 12 hours of videos in their inbox. They should be there by now. Now, all of those videos can be available to you. There's a lot of different stuff. I did a lot of videos before the course talking about the things I was going to be doing. The last session particularly where I went to quote one of my students off the reservation is certainly worth looking and I will post them on YouTube probably later today. Um, all of those videos can be available or will be available, but I'm not going to put them on my on my website. Just drop me an email at steve at stevejudd.co if you want them. Right. At the course last week, I started off on the Saturday morning by saying, look, this is a really bad day today. There's a lot of crazy aspects in the sky. It's not just a Mars node, um, Pluto square, Venus was opposite Saturn. There was a lot of very difficult aspects last Saturday. And um, as the day progressed, we heard the news from Israel and there was a number of other things going on in Afghani earthquake, which has been widely unreported. So many thousands of people have died there. But hey, it's Afghanistan. It's not anywhere else. So it's not important. Hmm. Human life is uh, graded on its importance by money and religion and media and political interest, it seems. I digress. Um, what's become obvious in recent days, and a big thank you here to one of my um, researchers, I'm going to call them. They're not a researcher, but they let me have interesting bits of information, is that I find it fascinating absolutely fascinating that the horoscope of Ali Khamenei he was born this is the leader of Iran he was born at the very end of Aries I've got his chart somewhere but he was an old man born at the very end of Aries his son is at 28 to 29 degrees of Aries being squared by Pluto and being opposed by Mars over this last week. I also note in the horoscope of Benjamin Netanyahu that his son is at 27 to 28 degrees of Libra. Mars in the sky was exactly on top of his son last weekend when the atrocities took place in the Middle East. I find it interesting that two extremely powerful old men both in charge of their countries, both for polar opposites, both who despise each other, both have Pluto square their sun at this time. And with the node opposite or conjunct their sun and Mars opposite or conjunct their sun. It would be easy for the events of last weekend to overshadow the fact that both of these people have a lot of personal problems at the moment around legal cases, tax issues, um, and both of them, uh, let's put it this way, the events of last weekend in Israel took the heat off a number of other developments concerning the leaders of those two countries. I'm not going to go any further than that. Read my lips. Right. Now there's an eclipse today. And what's happening? Well, the world is, is in, a, in a lot of turmoil right now. For a start off, there's a referendum in Australia today, now, about whether to give various levels of autonomy and human rights to the indigenous people of that country, which is, to, to my mind, it's obviously a complete no-brainer, but it seems as if the majority opinion is, no, we shouldn't give these people any rights. And I'm thinking, what? Why? Why not? 
And I'm sure there's lots of various good arguments as to why this could be the case, but it doesn't wash with me, I'm afraid. I'm biased because I'm pro-human rights. Um, let's look at the chart of Australia. Australia came into existence as a separate entity when it became independent from Britain on the 1st of January 1901 at midnight, although the swearing-in of members of the new government didn't take place until later that day, around 11am. However, the 1st of January 1901, 1pm um, is the time that is most commonly given. Although the independence was given around midnight that day, it was at 1pm that the swearing-in took place and that the Constitution became ratified. And that is the, that is the modern horoscope for Australia, 1st January 1901, 1300am, Sydney, Australia. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And whilst I'm saying about corrections, I do have to own my own stuff. I got it wrong in my last video I did around Israel with one factor. It wasn't Moshe Diane who banged his gavel, it was David Ben-Gurion. Thank you to the people who pointed that out to me. With the horoscope of Australia, what's notable about it is that it's got a Sun-Saturn conjunction in the ninth house. Now, if I saw that in the chart of an individual, I'd be saying, well, you're not going to travel well and you're not going to make friends easily. It's a Capricorn with the moon in Taurus. That's fine. But Aries rising and today's eclipse is taking place pretty much exactly opposite Australia's ascendant. That's the big one for me. And whenever I see something like that in a personal chart, I say, well, all of your relationships with other people at the one-to-one -one level are coming up under the microscope, whether it's personal and intimate, friend, social, professional, family. doesn't matter, but one-to-one -one situations are going, to are going to go through some massive changes in the near future. Now, we're not dealing with an individual, we're dealing with a country. Nevertheless, Australia is having a referendum today on whether to give its indigenous tribes people a say. And the eclipse is happening on the point that governs their relationships. And it's almost certain that they're going to say, no, we're not going to give these people the rights they want. I hope it's right. I hope I'm wrong. But Australia seems to be, the public image of Australia, in my world anyway, seems to be that it's run by a bunch of old white men who seem to be stuck in hock to the mining companies, the corporates, it's all about the money, and they really don't want to let go of their power because... Well, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, there's no other major transits going on apart from Uranus conjunct Australia's moon, which of course is massive. And in fact, that's worth looking at because the moon rules Cancer, which is the fourth house of the home. And, and in Australia's chart, the fourth house starts in Cancer. So the moon is the planet that deals with roots, foundations, home, ancestry. And Uranus is on the moon. So anyone with Uranus on their moon is going through a year of turmoil, especially around roots, home and foundations. And it's going to lead to some sudden unpredictable upsets. So there might be a sting in the tail on this referendum. I kind of hope so. But this isn't something that's going to go away. This isn't going to just, the result of a referendum isn't just going to be shoved under the carpet and say, OK, we well can forget about that for another decade. With the, the eclipse opposite Euro, uh, Australia's ascendant and with Uranus on Australia's moon, there are going to be fundamental changes in the way that Australia is run, if not now, then soon. And Australia will not be run the way it has been for so far within five to six years from now. But it isn't just Australia. 
There's an election in New Zealand as well. New Zealand... The horoscope for New Zealand... New Zealand was given, in, was given independence. It was released from British rule on the 26th of September 1907 at midnight. And the celebrations began at midnight in Wellington, New Zealand, although... The public announcement of independence was until 11 hours later at 11 a.m. on the morning of the 26th of September 1907. But New Zealand became an independent country on that time. 0001, 26th September 1907. And that's what the horoscope is set for. New Zealand, like Australia, has the moon in mid-Taurus. Uranus passed on its moon last year. With Australia, it's this year. Their moons are only three and a half, four degrees apart. Europe, New Zealand is a Libra with a moon in Taurus. Australia is a Capricorn with a moon in Taurus. New Zealand's Libra with moon in Taurus and Gemini rising. Um, the thing that's most notable about the horoscope of New Zealand is the strong sense of home and identity and roots and foundations that permeate the New Zealand chart. I think that New Zealanders are very proud of their country. I think they're quite insular. I fully understand why they don't want a lot of people moving there. And I think they've got a paradise and they know it. With the Sun and Venus together at the very base of the chart, opposite the Midheaven, there's going to be some fundamental changes in New Zealand, not just with this election today, but over the next few years. It's fairly certain that New Zealand's recent flirtation with left-wing politics is coming to an end today and there will be a right-wing government, or more right-wing government, in place. Um, I may be wrong on this. This is my speculation from the astrology. But this will not last long. In two years' time, it is the Saturn return for New Zealand. The, blimey, it'll be the 2023, it'll be the, the fourth Saturn return. In three years' time, Neptune will pass opposite the Sun, as will Saturn of New Zealand and in four and five years time Neptune will pass opposite ne uh, New Zealand's Venus and on its midheaven. So I do suspect that there's going to be a sudden reversal of fortunes in four to five years time and there's going to be an upturn in a, re a return to left wing or rather let let's get rid of this left wing right wing more communal more socially orientated politics. But then politics is going to be fundamentally changing. And this isn't all, because it's not just New Zealand and Australia. There's also an election taking place in Poland. Now, Poland, the horoscope for Poland is incredibly difficult to form. There's various horoscopes going back 500, 900, 1830, 1918, 1948. Poland has been constantly fought over between Germany and Russia. It's been split a number of times. But there is a case that the modern horoscope of Poland should be set for um, the 24th of August 1989. And to quote Nick Campion from the Book of World Horoscopes, second edition... Tadeusz Mazowiecki became the Prime Minister in Poland's solidarity-dominated coalition governments at, quote, a few minutes after 1pm on the 24th of August 1989. Although Communist Party members retained, were retained in government, this should be taken as the start of the first democratic Polish government and hence as the chart of democratic Poland. So to me, 24th of August 1989... A few minutes, five minutes, say, after 1pm. It makes um, 
Poland a Virgo with the Moon in Gemini and Scorpio rising. What's interesting is that Poland came to democratic government at the time where the Iron Curtain was collapsing and this was being caused by, astrologically, the conjunction of Saturn, Uranus and Neptune at the start of Capricorn. And this is strong in Poland's chart, all of them opposite Jupiter in early Cancer and square to, all of them square to Venus in early Libra. That's a bit of a strange one. But looking at the transits to this chart, the, the dominant transit at this time is A, Saturn is standing still now at zero and one degrees of Pisces. Poland has the sun at one degree of Virgo. And with Saturn standing still opposite Poland's sun from this last one month for this next six weeks, four, five, six weeks, it seems that this is a critical time in Polish history. And the decisions made in the next few days are going to send long-term shockwaves into the future. I also note that Neptune is about to start a one to two year transit opposite the Mercury of Poland. Mercury rules its midheaven. So its public image and the way it communicates itself into the world is going to come under a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of confusion over this next couple of years. So whichever way the election works in this next day or so, the outcome is not going to be certain and there will be further developments. The, the movement of Polish politics in recent years to the right, the all but complete banning of abortion, the all but complete um, uh, abhorrence of LGBTQ rights, it's, it's a bit worrying. And this brings me to the overall theme. We stand at a time, today there's an eclipse, okay, this is only a precursor. There's a massive eclipse coming up in April next year, and that's going to be much more important. But this is a precursor. It seems that the world is lurching towards the right, towards more militaristic, corporate, political, even religious control, whether we're talking the Middle East or Poland, whether we're talking Australia, whether we're talking America or in my country. And with all the outer planets at the end of their feminine signs and getting ready for the big transition of the next few years and do watch these videos I'm going to put live later today because they're, they're, I do go off the reservation and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not subtle. I won't be putting comments on, I don't think, because I'm going to upset a lot of people. Um, it seems to me that this is the, we're entering now into an accelerated last gasp attempt to swing the world politic firmly to the right because the stuff that's coming up in a few years' time is going to force humanity into adopting either a completely nihilistic, militaristic, um, corporate approach where words like compassion, kindness and empathy are just going to be eradicated from the rule book. Or the opposite. The world's going to be forced into a world where, where um, social care and the need to look after communities and a much greater balance into the social and communal world, a much greater capacity for empathy and the environment is going to become more and more of a norm. One of these two ways is going to be happening soon. So we stand on the cusp of a monumental time in human history. And today's eclipse, with all the corresponding referendums and, and elections going on around the world, is representative of this. So I, I'm viewing the long game here. 
I'm not looking at short term. I'm not looking at the next week or two or even year. I'm looking three years, four years, five years. We're heading into a kind of pretty difficult time now for the next few years. And it's leading to this crunch point that's coming up. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be represented in, in early 2026. Watch the videos I'll put up later. Hope this has been interesting. I've struggled to keep it all together, but I think I've done it. All right, catch you later, world. Bye now.